up here on Oswego today. We are inside of AMP Auto Parts, just across from our sponsor for the trip. Of course, Garofalo is right at the corner of Bridge Street and 9th. Mike Silliman is the guy in front of you. If you race Oswego Speedway and run Hoosier Tires, you know him. He's kind of the, the go-between between the Speedway and Hoosier. Very important job, by the way, as he'll talk about a situation that came up last year. First of all, Mike, how we doing, man? We're doing wonderful. Thank you. Good to see. So how are things looking as, as we approach the season? Because uh, obviously last year was kind of a season of unknowns almost. How do we look as of right now, in your opinion? I think we're looking good. Um, you know, we got three divisions up there. There's a lot of excitement um, in all the divisions. Uh, the 350s are growing again. There's more cars coming in, more guys moving up. Um, the SBS class, we've got some more new cars there. We had a lot of rookies last year. That's going to be really competitive. And then, you know, with the Super Modifieds, what's going on with that? With uh, Between the Oswego cars and then the merger with Isma and MSS and um, a lot of the things Johnny Nakotra's got going. And uh, it's going to be an exciting year. Um, the five race series is going to be great. Um, we we're looking yesterday, probably about six Isma cars that we know so far they're committed to the uh, – to run uh, the Champagne Memorial. So we haven't had that in a while. So uh, things are looking good. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we're airing this on Tuesday night. So happy birthday, John. It was his birthday today. So yeah. I made sure I got this home and, and up in time for you to see it. So really, with, let's, let's talk specifics here. That 350 class mm -hmm. really seems to be working out maybe better than expected, in your opinion? Um, I would about right? It's, it's about right. You know, we've had a lot of help. Um, you know, going with the star guys, uh, you know, the New England guys are coming in. Um, but, you know, we keep adding two, three cars here and there. We've had some great, you know, some young competitors move up, like uh, the Josh Sokolix, uh Nick Kinney, um, Dalton Doyle. Um, and I'm going to forget oh, a few really? now, uh, like young Tony DeStevens is going to uh, tread water in that this I year. That, so yes. there's a lot of them that are moving up to that. And it's a nice mix when you get the Jeffrey Battles and uh, the Eddie Whitcombs and guys coming in like that. It makes for real exciting racing, you know, and uh, Chase Locke, we can't forget him. Yes. He's a talented young man. Oh, yeah, really, yeah, really definitely. Talented. It seems like, because you're, you're familiar with the dirt side of things, the way they mm -hmm. have things set up with the step ladder. Mm -hmm. I think now with the small blocks, the 350s and the supers, the perfect three steps of the ladder are in place, are they not? Oh, definitely. And we actually have, you know, we, we started with the four because we had the go-kart track out there, but... Right. Uh, and uh, but yeah, the three steps are right there, just like the dirt circuit. Um, the only disadvantage has everything so unique. We don't. There's not a lot of tracks we're running at, um, especially the small blocks. You know, we have Danny series is helping out, but we we're not bringing from other other right. um, tracks like the supers and the 350s are. Good but point. Uh, but um, yeah, it's it's a uniqueness. It's a great three race division, and uh, it's nothing you're going to see anywhere else in the country. Again, we want to thank Garofalo's. You guys are right across the street. You probably got to run over there all the time right, oh, for yeah. lunch and get sandwiches yeah. and stuff. So oh, best yeah. homemade sausage around. Make sure to mm -hmm. check them out. Just like the places when we were kids that mm -hmm. you used to go in, in mm -hmm. the city and stuff. So it's a, it's like going back in time. Great uh, food. Garofalo's been a staple for over 50 years here. So Yeah. What's so. your favorite? Um, I always loved the sausage sandwiches, but uh, due to a health issue a couple of years ago, ah. I'm I'm off uh, off that for now. But uh, Okay. But, uh, yeah, they got, they got some great stuff over there. So what exactly is your job entailing? Because you told me about a situation last year. There was an issue with tires on some of the 350 cars. Uh, how does that work? How did you, first of all, become aware, and how do you get with Hoosier and fix the actual problem? Yeah, so it's, we take all the feedback from the drivers, um, the crew chiefs. We pay attention a lot to the tire wear and what's going on. Um, last year we were having some blistering issues with the 350s. Um, we didn't really make a tire, you know, Hoosier didn't have a tire for them, so we had to fit them into something and then develop it from there, which they monitored it. Um, they worked on the compound and uh, rolled out a different, uh, an upgraded tire for Classic last year, had no blistering issues. Nice. So it's a lot, of, a lot of that stuff. You know, we've, we've come a long ways with the 350 class. When we first started there in 2011, they ran hard, very, very hard nine inch tires. And we watched, we took feedback, we moved them into a 10-inch tire, we moved them into a softer tire. The racing got a lot better, and they wrecked a lot less race cars. So, mm -hmm. so it's a lot of that stuff we do. 
And that's a tough balance to find sometimes, isn't it? Right? Because you want the tires to last. So, okay, we'd like them a little harder, but you get them too soft and we're going through two, three tires a night. It's, it's a tough battle, isn't it? It's exactly, exactly. You need, you need drop off. You, you got to have, yes. if, if everybody's got the same hard, you know, fast tires, they don't drop off. The guy's going to win from the pole. And we had right. that issue in the mid, uh, around 2015, 2016 with the Supers. And we built a different, you know, brought the feedback back to Hoosier. They built a different left rear tire, something that wasn't as fast, dropped off, and you had to drive the car a little more, and the racing got better, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just like what we see on yep. NASCAR a lot of times. You oh, know? definitely. You, you want some fall off. Like I know the road course race, there was no fall off this mm -hmm. past weekend. It changed the strategies. Mm -hmm. So what got you into this whole thing in the first place, Mike? Were you a fan who was interested? Did you work on teams? What, what did you do? Well, I've worked on teams since I was about 15 years old. I started with Hale of Tula back in 1981, and I worked with uh, the Martell family, and I've been with the Abolds for the last 33 years. And I raced with Pat here at Oswego through Isma, yeah. and I went with some USAC racing with him, and uh, went to his IndyCar test, and uh, you know some You've of that stuff. Of stuff. So it was a lot of a lot of fun stuff. But um, back around 2011, when Johnny and Eric bought the racetrack, they approached me about uh, working on the tire deal for them, and uh, knew I had some contacts with Hoosier, and uh, you know we. Hoosier we've used for since 1990 and we did a lot of testing with him with Pat and over the years and some of the midget stuff also with Jeff so uh, it was a nice fit uh, I figured I'd do it for a few years and did it for yeah. us we're on 13 years I think now um, mm -hmm. I'm getting gotten away from the retail part of it and let Stevie Larkin and uh, Kevin Goodale kind of run the Saturday night show and I'm trying to step away but uh, I keep uh, keep involved as far as ordering and inventory and working with Hoosier and uh, just making sure the guys have the right stuff, especially since uh, the shortages, you know, we've had in the past, you know, the last couple of years and stuff. But I talked to Irish a while ago. He said they actually sold more tires last year than they did the year before. So was there really a shortage or did panic buying almost create that shortage? I think it was a lot of the panic buying that created it. Um, the, you had a lot, there was a lot more tires being bought and not as much you know they were, they were building as many or even more but they just it was hard to keep up you yeah. know um do they limit how many you can buy at oswego we do at oswego we we've done that for the 350s and the small blocks to try to keep it affordable and you know save them from themselves um <laughs> as as we say um we've had to do that with the supers the last two years um now, looking at the inventory at Hoosier now, the inventory's up and things are, you know, we can be, we can step out a little bit more and there can be more practice tires. So I think it'll be a good year. We, we can't go nuts yet, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's been kind of nice that, you know, we, we weren't allowed, a lot of guys weren't allowed to buy a lot of practice tires because uh, if you've seen the purse for practice, it's not that good. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> but it is about shaving a tenth or two if we can. So, oh, exactly. You know, all right. Well, I appreciate your candor. Good to see you again. I haven't seen Thank Mike you, since the uh, last time over at the Jeff Abel shop. I think that was maybe at the end of last summer or something like that. I think it so, was right after Star. Man, there's people wanting to race out here on yeah. Bridge Street, aren't they? Man, they're oh, crazy yeah. over here. So yeah. good to see you. I'll see you at the track again. It's coming up soon. I'll be at a lot of Fast Friday practices. So uh, if you guys have some requests and stuff, make sure to let me know. Again, thanks to Garofalo's for getting us here today. Hit the blue E. Mike knows this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Turn on all the notifications, right? Thank you. Take care, Mike. You good to see you. Good to see you.